Welcome back to all my stupendous viewers. We're going to be looking at r slash fat logic, where we make fun of the logic but not the people. Our first post comes to us from Pluto. That's quite the trip. Goodness forbid you get weighted a checkup. My doctor fussed at the nurse yesterday who rolled her eyes at me and insisted on putting me on the scale because protocol. I kindly refused twice and mentioned it to the doctor. He went in the hallway and asked the nurse to put a note on my file that I never need to get on the scale during intake. Then I asked to retake my blood pressure because it was a little high from the encounter with the nurse. Winky face. But did they really write what she thinks they wrote? Difficult. Word which brings us, you heard it here first, healthy is now a damaging word. Food blogs have put healthy before every baking recipe need to relax a little. And by that, I mean to stop fudging using that damaging word in such a misleading context. Let me make brown butter cookies without some kind of moral insinuation that my body is less than for not being good. Let me take care of myself by eating yummy foods that are satisfying and are a joy to share. Not Cinderella replied, I'm going to keep making healthy baking recipes just to spite her. Laughing smiley. I can feel your from Sorta Basic White Girl. Celebrate and send gratitude to the binge. I know how hard and distressing binging can be. I've been there. I know that there can be a lot of shame around binging. I've been there. And the binging is what is trying to save your life. The binging is keeping you going. The binging is making sure your body has nourishment. The binging is wise coping. The binging is resilient AF. The binging is keeping you alive. The binging is your body saying no to starvation. I know it's hard, but celebrate the binge. Send gratitude to the binge. An Omera cat replied, getting some strong all glory to the hypnotoad vibes here. All glory to the hypnotoad. From Comfortable Socks. Can someone find research on why letting kids be obese is good? Does anyone have links saved for articles on the danger of weight suppression in children? I've been doing searches, but I'm only finding things on why vegan diets are bad and why being fat is bad. But I'm sure I've read stuff on why dieting is harmful for children. Grillard. Try Confirmation Bias Weekly? From Miss Beaver. Yeah, when food wasn't so readily available. Diet culture has us think foods that kept your ancestors alive are bad for your health. Not Cinderella. Our ancestors had donuts, Oreos, and deep fried chicken. Wow, who knew? Just the feds. There are many cave paintings of early hominids hunting the mighty Dorito beast, and it is believed that a combination of hunting and husbandry contributed to its extinction in the late Ice Age. Our modern domesticated Doritos are nothing like their Paleolithic ancestors. Dark Silverhawk. Have you seen the recent breeding projects to bring back the 18th century Dorito? Fascinating things. Turns out the modern Cool Ranch Doritos have had much of the subtlety of their ancestors' flavor lost due to breeders emphasizing the size rather than the flavors. Luxon. Ugh! All these farmers and scientists messing with nature. No genetically modified Doritos for my family. From Love Dove Bunny. Protected her mental health by ignoring the truth. CW Mental Health Diet exercise, diabetes. So my work hired a mental health expert to talk to us about the stress of the pandemic. I ditched out of the Zoom call after her rant about one out of three Americans getting diabetes and fixing our lives by standing up more and exercising more. So I suppose I protected my mental health by refusing to listen to an expert shame my whole company. But I'm still irritated and I have a headache. Zombie Dango. Probably has a headache because of their poor diet and lack of exercise. Probably skimming on water intake as well. That's how I felt at 230 pounds, when little irritating things happened. For the rest of the day, I'd always become irrationally stressed about it. I'm way less angry since I've changed my lifestyle and lost some weight. From Zoe Michelle. Uh, what? If you're eating whatever you want, but think you shouldn't really be eating whatever you want, that's still a form of restriction. Sorry, bye bye Bonby. Even thinking of not eating a slice of cake or a candy bar is restriction and therefore an eating disorder. 
set by people who overeat by thousands of calories a day. From Casta Montira. Sure, Karen. Someone named Karen wrote, The calories per pound and basal metabolic rate stuff is fiction. I eat about 875 calories a day in the form of green veg and lean white meat. My weight, height, and gender dictate a basal metabolic rate of 1486. Over a week I should lose 1.22 pounds according to the myth. I am putting it on. Christabel YYC. <coughs> Secret eaters. Gusto Montira. Oh, so you're telling me the two bajillion pints of beer I drank at the weekend have calories? Who would have thought? American Mary. I was literally not at all aware of how many calories beer has until my first year of graduate school. I couldn't figure out why I was starting to stack on the weight. It didn't even occur to me that my three or more nightly IPAs might be part of the problem. I love my beer, but it makes weight loss so much harder. Rashikage X. Yeah, it's basically liquid bread. Crusty crab is fun fare. What's wrong with bread? Insert witty joke. It's basically solid beer. From Bekra. Sure, but not every single bite. Food is supposed to be rewarding and pleasurable. When we dumb down food to the sum of its nutrients, we negate the meaning of food. Animals feed while human beings dine. Not Cinderella. I mean, every single bite of food you eat can be enjoyable. But how many bites you need? Laughing and crying emoji. From Hellacious. Imagine urgently needing help because your mutual friend liked an Instagram post. Anonymous. I urgently need help for a friend. One of our mutual friends liked an Instagram post saying that the body positivity movement has gone too far, which had zero sources or proof or anything. It was literally just random opinions, and she's really upset. Do you have a tag or something with info to debunk this? OCR Amazon. I urgently need help because my friend is mad that another friend likes something that someone else posted. Here's an idea. On the count of three, everybody mind their own darn business. From Inked Ravens of Despair. Let your partner be morbidly obese. They deserve it. Anonymous. Hey, my fiancé struggles with his weight. He's a tall guy, bigger built, but he does have quite the belly. I'm hoping you could connect me with some of your resources that detail whether or not he's hitting obesity. And also, if you have any resources on how to properly and healthily reduce his weight. He thinks he's morbidly obese, but I just don't think he's incredibly far off being a healthy weight. Anyway, thank you. I'm going to be really frank with you here, and you're not going to like what I'm going to say. So put on your big person panties and get ready to listen. Because I'm going to help you be a better person, okay? Okay! If you're in love with a fat person, you need to understand that you are dating someone who's a member of a marginalized group. You are dating someone who's experienced abuse and discrimination because of their weight. And you are dating someone who likely has trauma from those experiences. You are dating someone who has likely internalized the fat phobia they've experienced and suffers daily from shame and guilt. You are dating someone who has likely been denied food in the past by their family and who likely struggles with shame and guilt-induced disordered eating today. Knowing that, your job is to educate yourself about health at every size. Your job is to educate yourself about fat acceptance. Your job is to immerse yourself in the world of fat liberation and anti-diet approaches to eating because those are the only ways you're actually going to be a force for good in your fiancé's life. If you keep going down this road you're on, a road where you violate your partner's boundaries by sending me asks like this, where you think it's your job and your right to dictate what his body should look like and how he should eat, where you think it's your job to define and name his body, then you're perpetuating fat phobic abuse. You're abetting in your partner's opposition. You're doing him harm. Back off, back off, back off. Your fiancé's weight and body are none of your business. Your job is to offer him a safe haven from the abuse he suffers on a daily basis existing in this world as a fat person. You need to accept him unconditionally and allow him space to heal from the abuses he has suffered. And if you cannot do that, then you need to leave him now. Because well-meaning family members are the number one source of fat people abuse. And that needs to stop. Your fiancé deserves better. So be better, Anon. Be better. The Fruit Song replied, Your partner's weight and body are none of your business. Oh, that one hit a little too close to home. In my previous relationship, I was dating a guy who was close to 350. I hope she means pounds and not kilograms. When we met, he was 285. We both gained weight during the relationship, but that's another story. He gained a lot of weight after quitting his job as a janitor and eventually quit working altogether, opting to be a house spouse instead. We couldn't go out for walks without him wheezing and wanting to cut them short. My dog would often be neglected because he would lie and say he took him outside to go to the bathroom when he didn't, leaving our apartment to be covered with pee and poop. Same with his cat. He would forget to clean out the litter box, leaving me to do it, because he couldn't bend over to clean it out. 
We lived on the third floor with no elevator, so I also had to take out the garbage and anything that required walking up and down them. All he ate was fatty and carb-loaded foods. The man claimed vegetables made him sick and would not touch anything healthy. While carb-loaded foods weren't expensive per se, it led to a lot of food that would have to be loaded with spices to taste like anything more than grease and salt. I legit got sick of eating like that after a few months. He was so large that I would have to sleep on my side at the very edge of our queen-sized bed if I didn't want to fall off during the night. His sleep apnea and snoring got so much worse and would leave me with little sleep. If he thrashed around, I would get pushed off, or pretty close to it, enough anyway to wake me up out of sleep. His health was in the toilet and he refused to see a doctor. I remember very vividly he once fell over in the tub because of a kidney spasm, and I legit thought I could not get him out because he was so large. I wasn't exactly lifting weights at the time. He would complain about being out of breath, his joints and back aching, and his stomach problems, I think acid reflux. If I brought up weight loss, he would claim that he was healthy or that it would do him no good, even though I had functioning eyes. Gaslighting. I would buy groceries and it seemed to never be enough, and he would constantly be begging to go out to eat because he forgot to cook something. I could have put my foot down, but I was often so tired after work, I just gave in and drove us to get something to eat. Pre-pandemic, obviously. Oh yeah, he would have issues driving because his stomach would touch the wheel of the car. The car would also visibly dip when he got in. He talked about wanting to have kids, but I knew if he wasn't even taking the dog outside, how was he going to run around and play with our kids when I wasn't home? I just foresaw a house full of sedentary people who burned through food. Speaking of family, when we went to visit my parents, he couldn't fit in the shower they had, it was a standing shower, or wash himself properly in the tub. So my visits with my relatives always had to be short, which after a four hour drive was always a pain because they would notice his smell, and if he did move around a lot and not shower, his body odor would be strong as fudge. He also got rejected from life insurance because of his poor health, so if, heaven forbid, anything happened to him, I would be screwed. It eventually got to the point where I felt like I was living with a millstone around my neck. Nothing I did helped, and he refused to do anything about it. His weight wasn't the reason we broke up, but it certainly didn't help matters. Some of this could have been depression, but it garam fudging tea it, that if he was a normal weight, or just slightly overweight, these issues would not have been nearly as bad. If you really love someone, you will try to do your best to make sure that both of you can live a long and happy life together. From Sour Notes Three comments from the same person about how doctors did nothing to help her. The doctor doesn't care about your self-esteem, just your health. Last doctor I went to, she was female, basically said all my issues were weight related, and my constant fatigue was because I didn't have a set bedtime. As if I'm a kid. And while yes, she was probably partially right, she wouldn't fudging listen to me. I had labs done, and I haven't gotten a call, and it's been over a month and a half. I've attempted to diagnose myself via looking at them on my chart, but I'm not a doctor. I know I have high cholesterol. I even told her that, but did I get a med to help that? No. I'm also borderline diabetic, from what I can tell. Why haven't I been called about that? Ugh, it's frustrating. She had me track my eating habits on my fitness pal app, which I did for two to three weeks, but I swear it felt like an eating disorder waiting to happen. I got to where I'd internally freak if I got close to my daily calorie limit. Needless to say, I'm not going back to her. Even my wife said she sounded like a butt trench. Valkyrie Jen, a new character who's appearing in this episode several times, appears for the first time. Tracking food is too hard. Just give me medication to manage things. They're just going to doctor shop and find someone who will dole out pills without telling them to lose weight or change their diet. From Live Love Run, Fantastic Sanity from a Dietitian. Someone writes, We're the 80s kids. We didn't bring organic turkey on spreaded bread with spring water to school. We brought bologna sandwiches, cheese balls, and Kool-Aid for our lunch. It didn't hurt us. Our moms didn't give us filtered water to drink. We drank water from the hose. It didn't hurt us. 80s kids are tougher than today's kids. That's the most boomer thing I've ever heard anyone from the 80s say. I'm a dietitian, and this is nonsense. I'm an 80s kid too. I ate processed meat on white bread every day too, and snacks were chips and cookies. We always had soda in the fridge. Guess what this all did to me? It denied me the opportunity to value good nutrition as a result. Had to work very hard in adulthood to lose weight and get my health back. Millennials have the highest obesity rate of any generation. Just because we survived doesn't mean it didn't hurt us. Our generation is full of people who have diabetes, heart disease, 
PCOS and fatty liver disease because of being fat. Our generation has sadly largely passed on these bad eating habits to kids, and childhood obesity has skyrocketed. So yeah, goodness forbid moms like me take care in the lunch I send with my son to school. Goodness forbid he doesn't get Kool-Aid or soda except on rare occasions. It's our responsibility to break the cycle of obesity and give our kids a fighting chance. So please stop sharing this BS and take some responsibility as a parent. And while you're at it, be really honest with what your upbringing did to you. Surviving is a pretty low bar to set. Hashtag fudge H-A-E-S. Hashtag fat acceptance is death acceptance. Hashtag break the cycle. I don't know who posted this, but she or he sounds like a great person. Solon Avalanche replied, 80s kid, I had childhood obesity before it was cool. Emoji with sunglasses. I mean, epidemic. From Anti-Fat Logic, I've probably scrolled through thousands of progress pics and felt happy for them every time. Bizarre. Enough with the before and after pictures. Let's finally stop celebrating and congratulating diet culture, disordered eating, and unsustainable weight loss. Literally, the only person who cares if you lose weight is you. Think about that for a second. Does anyone actually care if you lose weight? Honestly, probably not. Tell me the last time you saw someone share a before and after photo and thought, wow, I'm really glad that person lost weight. The answer is probably never. Before and after photos are freaking harmful. You are openly saying that your before was unworthy. So how might someone who currently has a body like your before perceive your message? Is their body suddenly unworthy too? Wait, is Mjolnir involved in this somehow? Let's start celebrating and congratulating body diversity. Let's celebrate a healthy relationship with food in our bodies. You know, I could really get behind us celebrating a healthy relationship with food. Let's congratulate people for the bad butt things they are able to accomplish in a well-fed mind. So the next time you feel inclined to share your before and after, just don't. Black heart. For me, somebody posting any kind of progress pics, even if it's like they've improved their car, They've improved their house, they've improved their diet, they've improved their health. It's all the same thing to me. They're doing something that improves their life, and it takes a lot of hard work, so why, why wouldn't I congratulate them? From Stock the Killer, FAs be like, I don't see it. But what about the obesity epidemic? It's not a real thing. Fat people existing does not qualify as an epidemic. It's a state-sponsored, highly profitable fat phobia. Thanks for asking. The obesity epidemic is made up. People are also taller than they used to be on average, but the government is not using tall people's tax dollars to fund a war on tallness. Our average body temperature is dropping 0 0.05 degrees per decade. Fahrenheit. But there's no war on coldness. There's nothing wrong with being fat, and after billions of dollars spent in diets prescribed, fat people just keep on existing. In fact, considering that most diets end with people gaining back more weight than they lost, what those who are in such a hurry to prevent larger bodies might want to wage a war on is dieting. Regardless, fat people have the right to live without shame, stigma, bullying, oppression, and it doesn't matter why we're fat, what being fat is or is not correlated with, or if we could be thinner. The rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are not and should not be size or health dependent. It sounds to me like you're straight up admitting that being obese is bad for your health and doesn't care. Oh yeah. Guess what else is highly profitable? Junk food. But I don't see any of them protesting against it. Strange. Joker and the King added, My former classmate once told me a story about a parent who was angry at the healthy menu at her child's school and promoted fast food for the school cafeteria and won. She even ended up on the local newspapers. I was so disappointed to hear that she won. From Hidden is Back Beyonce's clothing line is fat phobic? If Beyonce walks that butt up on my telephone screen one more emphatic time without a completely size inclusive line, any large brand that still stops at an extra large is problematic and extremely fat phobic. I don't care. Because what promising brand is still doing drops that don't include the average sized woman? You're really just disrespectful at this point and whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. I love Beyonce, but after all these years of being a super fan, this will be the thing that has made me look at her super sideways. This is what I imagine super sideways looks like. You have the budget, so what's going on sis? Stop using fat bodies to push an agenda you're not really about. Love you, but absolutely not. Before more of you hop into my mentions to correct me, understand that I'm open to correction if it means that all women are finally being respected. 
Beyonce isn't rich because of thin girl money alone. Eh. So I stand by what I said. I'm glad she's adjusting. Cheers to inclusivity. Three stars. Want to know why I didn't research before I said anything? Because the Beyonce Knowles should have never dropped a non-inclusive line in big, big 2020 period. With all the big girls she has on tour, it was unbecoming of her. Glad she's learning. And y'all are on mute. Goodness bless you. Grillard. Once again, start your own clothing line and take it up to extra, 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 <gasps> extra, extra, extra large for all anybody cares. Goodness bless you. From Sugar Addiction. I do all of this and I'm still able to lose weight. Not everyone obsesses over food when trying to lose. Eat an everything bagel with cream cheese on a Sunday morning. Wake up without a guilt hangover. Have another slice of ice cream cake because it's just that good. Eat the Cheerios your child wants to feed you one by one. Look forward to Thanksgiving dinner because there's no guilt around eating. Spontaneously order takeout because you don't feel like cooking. Use an intuitive amount of salad dressing. Enjoy the movie after dinner because you ate enough. Valkyrie Jen, I'd really like to see what amounts to an intuitive portion of salad dressing. From Elmer 2000, oh boy, I found a good one. I eat probably 4,000 calories a day and I am 110 pounds at 5 foot 5 considered underweight. I do not exercise at all. It all depends on your metabolism, not caloric intake. Calories are like BTUs. Higher calorie stuff is actually easier for your body to digest. Staying skinny doesn't have to do with calories. It has to do with the chemistry of what you're eating. I would love to explain more, but I'd have to write a Bible. Feel free to DM me for more. Not not a potato. Ma'am, I think you have a tapeworm. From Sullen Avalanche. Today I learned I must have low survival instinct. I love this actually, and I took it as motivation for someone that voluntarily chose to get healthier, as opposed to telling someone that they have to lose weight to be free or happy. But this is coming from someone that is on a weight loss journey. Food coach and nutritionist here, healthier does not mean skinnier. For some people, being healthier means actually gaining weight. Either way, it means allowing your body to be whatever size it needs to be while you are living your healthiest life. Aiming to lose weight is oftentimes inherently unhealthy to the body as most bodies, except for those with low survival instincts, cannot separate between intentional weight loss and a famine. Big bad throwaway today replied, Dear FAs, Get this, there's a part of my body that I do use to determine how much I eat. It's the part inside my skull. You see, the rest of my body evolved to be fudging but opportunistic when food showed up. But now that poopy garbage weight gain 3,000 food is everywhere, that body system is uh, less than helpful. And the only armor I have against the frappuccinos and Doritos and super sugar frosted O's is that thing in my head that lets me reason with my animal body. You know, the one that gets so much of a reward from eating sugar, salt, and fat that it would probably let me eat myself to death. You know, like you're doing. Love, BBTT. Blutarg, the human brain, nature's ultimate survival tool. Big bad throwaway today. Nutritionists hate this one simple trick. From Ava Bad. Does anyone want an invite to my fat phobic future heart attack diet party this Saturday? Trick word, Virgie Tovar. I know diets can be toxic to some, but I had a mild heart attack at 22 that was super scary for me. I've been taking care of myself and embracing who I am to make myself feel better and understand my body. Sometimes diets are good for you. I'm still plus sized. I'm still taking care of myself, but if I didn't, I wouldn't be here for my son. Just thought I'd share. Virgie Tovar. Get off my page. Go have a fat phobic future heart attack diet party somewhere else. Is this a character Virgie Tovar does? Or does she really think like this? It's so hard to tell in the modern day and age when people are being fake or real. Can anyone actually be as mean as what she seems to be here? From Dream Farewell. Wanting to be thin is harmful, apparently. Really hate that I just really fudging want to be thinner these days. Lately it's all I can think about, and it's annoying because I'm really body positive and I try to uplift others, and say being fat is not a crime. That it's not necessarily better to be thin, but these days I keep thinking everything would be better if I was thinner. I've all but convinced myself that my life would be better if I was thinner that I would be happier. It's been a part of my motivation for the last few days, and it's made me more productive, but I can't escape the reality that this is damaging to myself. I'm out of my depth here, 
I don't know what to do. Vital Musician replied, The most healthy thing for this person in the short term would be to lose the drama and realize that one's weight is a neutral feature determined by simple math. Using terms like harm, crime, etc. is so over the top. Eat less and you'll weigh less. Eat more and you'll weigh more. I wished more people stopped treating food and diet like it's some spiritual journey to enlightenment or damnation. It's just a bunch of chemicals that turn switches on or off in your body. That's it. Don't overthink it. I've never read anything else by this vital musician guy before, but he seems like a frickin' genius. From Micker Goths. It's almost like some things are encouraged because they're good for you, and not because of beauty standards. Hate diet culture so much bees will be like, don't eat processed carbs, they're so bad for you, and like, and what? So what? God did not give us grain and stone to grind it with for no reason. Bread is inevitable. Bread is food for the heart and the soul. You think I'm going to give that up in pursuit of Instagram fitness? You think I'm going to deny myself the simple pleasure of toast with jam so I can endlessly chase an ever-shifting standard of beauty that ultimately means nothing? In 20 years, my body will no longer be beautiful, and in 60, my body will be vacant food for other, smaller creatures. But the taste of fresh bread, of homemade donuts and stillborn pie, I will carry the taste on my tongue into whatever follows this life. So, like, stop telling me I should diet, LMAO. I'm not about to murder myself just to get a man to look at me. From a metaphorical point of view, this is very confusing. She's taking her tongue into her next life, but not the rest of her body? Or is her whole body going into the ground and going to be eaten by worms? In which case she won't get to take the taste with her. And, and how long is the taste of bread staying on her tongue that hours later, even after dying, it's still there? From Tin Tinuvial, I don't understand this weird relationship fat logic has with separating the mind from the body. Like your body is a separate entity from your person? Weight gain is an opportunity for your body to exhale to let your belly rise, to let your thighs soften into each other, to let your arms expand, to let your face relax, to place your widened hand on your cushioned chest and hear the whisper from your center, thanks for letting me be. That was so strange, I'm not going to comment on it. I think it stands in its own world of weirdness. From Elmir 2000, any promotion of weight loss is snake oil, even if it's healthy weight loss. Healthy weight loss or losing weight in a healthy way does not exist. Nope, no way, it doesn't exist. If someone tells you they can help you lose weight, they're selling you snake oil. Beware, it just does not exist. Period. Fancy violinist. All hail gluttony. The only ladder to the stars. Science is snake oil. The true experts on health are the people who can't cross a room without becoming winded. From Carbohydrate King. Proud of yourself for not binging? Okay, fat phobe. Little Winds started craving some chocolate and after a lot of back and forth was, should I go to the shop or should I leave it? I hopped in the car and went up and got one chocolate bar and brought it home. This is a huge win for me. Normally a trip to the shop would result in a big haul and buying loads of chocolate to binge on, but this one bar has satisfied my craving and I'm so proud of myself for fighting the initial diet thought and then for only buying enough to feel satisfied. Sad face, black heart. I totally understand where you're coming from. But please don't judge food, junk food, and use language like stuff myself, because it sounds like you're assigning moral value to food and eating, and that is not what IE is about. Haggle poise. A. Eats more intuitively. B. No, don't intuit that way. Your intuition is offensive. From Kitcha Kit. Why did they gaslight us into thinking that it's impossible for our hunger fullness cues to be broken? Any part of the human system, including the fullness cue system, can malfunction, yet this possibility seems unfathomable to them. Myth versus fact question. 12,000 calories is enough for some adults. The RDA of 2,000 calories is the max a woman should eat. Myth to both. No adult should be eating so little. 1,200 is enough for a toddler, and you can need more than 2,000. Intake can also vary from day to day depending on sleep, physical activity, how much you ate the day before, good news is you don't need to micromanage it. Your hunger and fullness cues tell you exactly how much you need. More on that in the next slide. Two sample t-test. Actually, minus $600 in the bank is normal for an adult to have. You don't need to track your money. Your bank will notify you with overdraft fees when you have insufficient funds. More on that on the next slide. 
right count. $600 is more than a toddler needs in their bank account. From Love Dove Bunny, Sanity, friend is getting out of fat acceptance. Hi, I'm in a couple of HAES and fat positive groups and I'm starting to realize that I'm not really accepted there. I'm starting to come to terms that my weight is causing my health issues and when I briefly brought it up, I got a lot of negative replies. Also, I was told I'm not big enough to really belong in the groups. Can you help me? I know you've lost over 100 pounds and I want to leave being big behind. Hi, I'm really glad you reached out to me. I've been concerned about your health and weight for years now, and I never knew how to approach you about it since you were getting deep into fat acceptance. I hope you understand that this is a lifelong change and not a quick fix. In addition, there is no right way to lose weight in a healthy way. Hope to see you soon. She probably meant to say, there is not just one right way to lose weight in a healthy way. Love Dove Bunny added more. One of my friends messaged me and has come to terms with the fat acceptance movement in her health. I'm really happy for her because she was around 300 pounds and was getting unhealthier and unhealthier, and I can tell it was damaging to her mental health. The rest of the conversation is about her family being extremely unhealthy. Parents got high blood pressure in their 30s. And how I managed to change my relationship with food. From Big Bad Throwaway Today. Do you know of any nutrition guides that will tell me what I want to hear? No, but these Facebook groups are great. Ugh. Anonymous said, Do you know of any detailed nutrition guides for diabetics and people with unstable blood sugars that aren't weight loss diets in disguise? Every guide I find, from official trusted health sources even, focus on weight loss instead of evening out your sugar levels. One even went so far as to say drink extra water before a meal so you don't feel so hungry. Ah, uh, what does that have to do with blood sugar control? I don't know of any guides off the top of my head, but these two Facebook groups are a great resource. Non-dieting diabetics, diet-free talk for diabetes, insulin issues. OCR Amazon. They could, and I know this sounds crazy, ask their doctor. From Broken Beautiful, stop losing weight and posting photos of it. I'm showing the initial post versus Killer to Peer's response side by side. Thin is not better. Killer to beer. It's better for me. Weight loss is not a moral achievement. Didn't say it was. Weight loss is not success. If I achieve something I'm trying to achieve, that is by definition a success whether you like it or not. Weight loss is dangerous. Not as dangerous as weight gain. Weight loss is fat phobic. I don't care. Congratulating these posts is also fat phobic. Still don't care. Transformation photos are triggering and entirely unnecessary. Photos of puppies can theoretically trigger those who recently lost a pet. They're also unnecessary. I still want to see them. Stop doing it. No. From Inked Ravens of Despair, Press X. I have a really great doctor who is all over HAES. He's super supportive with my obesity because I'm lucky enough that my fitness program and eating habits plus genes have allowed me to have perfect health. My nan is the same, 86 fat and minimal issues. The thing is, it's up to healthcare workers to learn about why this is normal for so many fat people. Why are so many fat people doing better health-wise than others? Love Muzz. Wait, is it lucky to be healthy while obese, or is it common? Does it require good genes, physical fitness, and a nutritionally decent diet? Or are so many fat people healthier than their less heavy peers? From Stock the Killer. Let people eat what they want. Public service announcement. Cauliflower is not rice. Zucchini is not pasta. Lettuce is not a wrap. Blended frozen bananas is not ice cream. Mushrooms are not burger buns. Carbohydrate King replied. FAs, all foods are equal. Eat whatever you want and listen to your body. Don't criticize other people's food choices because it's their body, not yours. Also FAs, this post. It's almost like they want an excuse to eat like poop and not feel guilty about it. From Ekimsol. Any choice you make is a personal call out and also futile. It's definitely okay to be fat and it's great to love your body the way it is. However, do not tell fat girls that are working to get a slimmer or curvier frame that their body is okay the way it is. Do not put them down for working out and do not imply that they are doing it for male gaze. Fat people who attempt to go against their weight set point and fruitlessly try to magically gain skinny person genetics have internalized fat phobia 95% of people who lose weight will gain it back or more within 3-5 to five years. There is no long term and healthy way to lose weight. If you're fat and trying to lose weight, you almost certainly have internalized fat phobia and that isn't okay.
Learning to care about yourself the way you are is the only chance you have at ever liking or even feeling neutral about your body. Please don't encourage weight loss. You support fat phobia when you do. Balverine Meat replied, No healthy way? So I guess walks and vegetables don't exist? Learn to care about yourself by eating yourself to an early grave with junk food and soda. That's definitely the only way to respect your body for sure. From Miss Beaver. These people are paranoid? Delusional? One part of interacting with healthcare providers while living in a fat body is that your value and worth as a patient are always, always conditional and based on your perceived compliance. I've been seeing my dentist, who I adore for many years. My genetic lack of tooth enamel makes me a frequent visitor. In anxious situations, I'm the friendly, reassuring, warm, fat woman, laughing and making small jokes and easy talk, and I'm often rewarded by being treated like a normal person due to my social overcompensation for my size, as well as my privilege as a white cisgendered woman. That approach has worked well with the hygienists at my dentist's office, who all seem like genuinely nice, sweet, caring women. I like them all, and they like me. And yet, there's the mouthwash. At this point in the story, you're probably wondering what this has anything to do with fat logic. But we'll get there. And what I assume was a response to Budweiser 19, when I arrive, I'm now handed a small cup of mouthwash and asked to use it. This has happened three times now. The first time, I was very taken aback. To find that about 15 seconds into swishing, the mouthwash began to burn my mouth. It got worse and worse. I valiantly swished and swished, counting each second, and didn't quite make the full time before I had to spit it out. Trauma queen! I mentioned to the hygienist that it burned, but didn't make a big deal of it and we moved along. The second time I tried harder with the same level of success. The third time I decided to advocate for myself, the hygienist accommodated me easily enough and even volunteered to go find a mouthwash that had different ingredients, for which I thanked her profusely. The results were no better. The Edge. The reason I'm telling you this isn't because of any of the three hygienists who were rude to me about it. I want to tell you about the edges. Each time I'm non-compliant about this mouthwash, the hygienist dealing with me has gained an edge, just a touch of dehumanization. When she says, that's strange, no one else reported that reaction. I can hear it in the edge of her voice. I can see it, subtle, on her face. I have gone, just around the edges, from being a person to being a large, ungainly, needy, difficult object, making the day a little longer. These are all good people who would probably never intentionally treat me poorly. In fact, the third hygienist praised me fulsomely five or six times during the x-ray process for being so good at holding the also uncomfortable to painful x-ray holder things in my mouth. But now that the edge is there, what does that mean for me in future visits? Will they be less patient, less understanding, more likely to hurry me through my care in a way that puts me at a higher risk of mistakes? Even if the answer is no, I will now feel pressured to appease and fawn even more, to be even more the best possible big person, to compensate. And this is a very low stakes and subtle piece of my healthcare experience. I still love my dentist. No one has done anything wrong, and I will continue to visit this office. My care will probably be just fine. But the edge is still there. It's there for every fat person in every healthcare related encounter. And if it's not there already, it will appear the moment we advocate a little too strongly for our own humanity and worthiness of proper care. Or ask to be treated as well as a thin person presenting the same symptoms or appear non-compliant in any way. It's important to note here too that compliance in a healthcare context often means weight loss, which is both viewed as a measure of commitment to being seen and treated as a human and something that is not possible for 90% of humans to sustain. Our willingness to healthcare depends on our willingness to comply, to starve ourselves, to eat in disordered ways, to spend our time and money and resources to put ourselves at risk of eating disorders so that we can appear worthy for long enough to request and receive treatment. Do you have an edge? I have a thin friend who doesn't floss, ever. She sat down with her dentist one day and said, look, I'm managing multiple chronic illnesses. My medications take up a significant portion of my day and they are 100% of what I can manage. I'll brush, but flossing is just one thing too many. So we might as well be honest about it and see what else we can do to medicate it. Her dentist was willing to work with her, but I'd like to invite you to examine your own reaction to the previous paragraph. My reaction is that flossing takes exactly 60 seconds. She should just do it and stop making excuses about how she's too busy. Does your reaction change when I tell you that friend is actually a fat person? No. Did you get a little uncomfortable? No. Did your jaw clench? No. Did your nose wrinkle just a tiny bit? No. Were you initially sympathetic and now a little less so? 
No, I was never sympathetic to her case. What feelings and convictions about fat people just kicked in? That's the edge, and your fat relatives and friends and patients and customers and classmates and students and teachers and loved ones can see it. So the edge is just people getting frustrated with you for not doing simple things? For not listening to the advice of your doctor or dentist? Yeah, I'm okay with the edge being there. I think doctors and dentists have every right to be upset with you if you don't listen to what they say. And, at the bare minimum, brush and floss. They're not hard to do, and they don't take much time. 